on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> Carolyn, what is this par witch? What is this par witch um, caravan thing that you're talking about? Well, once a year around St. Peter's Day, Parwich has what's called a wakes. A lot of villages around have a wakes and they have a carnival in and fancy dress and um, I don't know, um, a disco and a hill race and all sorts of things happening. So on the Saturday, they, they have a procession in the church and they have a special service. And on the Sunday, um, the, some of the villagers join this group of caravanners that are caravanning parked up on the football field the nation ground and they've been doing that for years so this this is what they would normally have had uh, a service with lots of caravanners all right mm. I, I did go down there with my mobile phone to see if we could actually sit down there and do zoom Ruth, how did the church opening go? Okay, I've got to go and lock it, but it's been open. I forgot it was Sunday today because I worked yesterday, so it got opened a bit late. But um, it has been open this afternoon. Good. Good. I don't know if anyone's been. Lynette said she'd not seen anyone come th through to look in the, look, you know, and no one had been to ask her for the key. So. Right. So nobody came while it was locked. That's good. No. Yeah, that's okay then. Cool. Well, per perhaps you can tell if there are any of those signs that have been turned over. That's what I'm going to go down. I was going to go, but I. I've been sorting out some treasures. Oh, good. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> or old treasures that I'm having to let go of, put it that way. <laughs> what are you eating, Clark? I can see you eat your, must be having cake. Uh, it's well, it's just on a Zoom meeting. Derbyshire tea meeting. loaf. Actually, oh, right. and it's really very good, very simple. Ari makes it. I, I, I'd kill you if I made anything, but um, um, it's made from um, dried fruits which you put in a bowl, and you, you make a strong <laughs> mug of tea, and then soak the fruits in the tea overnight, and then mix it with flour, etc., and bake it. And it's very, very nice, especially with some butter on it. So, that's what everyone else I would call. Sorry, Clark. That's what everyone else. I call that tea cake. No, it's it's Derbyshire tea loaf. That's what. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, like, I call it Barabri. Yeah, in Wales they call it Barabri. It's got an egg in it. It's got an egg in it and a bit of um, a spice. Yeah. Uh, yeah, And an orange. <laughs> and an orange juice. Oh. Yeah. And I bake it very well. So will you bake that <laughs> for next Sunday then, Robert? No, 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 I'll kill you if I bake them in caramel. Rubbish. Mine is gingerbread and it's from a, a recipe in um, an, an Alison Ackley book of recipes. Ooh. So I reckon that's sort of Derbyshire, hopefully. Yeah. Very yeah. nice. Well, th this, is, this is Mars bar cake. Um, so <laughs> it, it consists of 150 grams of... Um, Rice Krispies plus nine snack bars, <laughs> nine <laughs> snack bars and uh, 300 food? grams of dark chocolate on the top. So uh, we need to go for a run afterwards, really. Yeah, I mean. Second attempt, and it's actually probably a bit better than the first attempt. But the reason he's done this is because we our oven's not working at the moment. Okay. It's fixed tomorrow. A time clock or something's gone. So. You couldn't bake, could you? So it though? needs to be something that you just put together and then puts, goes in the fridge to chill down and then you, then you can eat it. If, if you go to the cafe at Litchfield Cathedral, you get a much better version because they <laughs> shared it. The, one of the furloughed staff whose job is to make cakes, she literally spends all her time making cake. Um, she shared that on a Zoom gathering for, for us and we all did it together one evening. Yeah. That's a bit sexist to have a woman make it, isn't it? I mean, you, you, <laughs> proof, you can do it. 
It's just I have to go in person. Oh, I see the, the person, right, of course. When, when I go to use the microwave, I have to right. go into the kitchen where she's making making the cakes, and there's always it's always very tempting to see what's sort of sitting around there. Unfortunately, there's never any sort of loose crumbs or anything you can legitimately collect. Can you see the cat? Yeah. yeah. Sorry, about Mary. She's Sorry, I'm, she's I'm trying, not. trying to look fast. Oh, yeah. Caroline shouldn't enjoy a cat. Yeah, just the Oh, there we are. Hello. Hello. <laughs> She's, <on the> chair. <laughs> She's big, wasn't she? Brilliant. Do we know how Dennis is? Uh, yes, poor Dennis is still in hospital. Um, he was waiting for a turn on the MRI scan. Yeah. He got a turn on Friday, and halfway through his scan, it broke. <laughs> oh, no. oh, no. so, so they've got half of the scan done um, but they're waiting until the scan is now mended and he has to stay in until he's had that scan what was what is the problem heart, heart trouble again okay mm. oh. so that's lack of use of the machine really isn't it due to COVID-19 <laughs> so, yeah oh. shut down <laughs> Well, that could mean it's working. Like, like, like the oven failure. <laughs> yeah. they, no, they had to they had to wait for about 10 days to get a slot. It was yeah. so busy with COVID, he, they couldn't get in. It's been overworked with machinery, yeah. I think so. And perhaps, probably, yeah. it might have even missed a maintenance, mightn't it, if they were just pushing through. Could have, could have, yeah. 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 Mm. So poor Pauline's on a road. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Railing coming back. Here comes Ros. Where's railing come? Oh, I think the internet must have cut out. Oh no, they're back coming back now. Yes, they're coming back now. Yeah, we've had to go in. in oh. The uh, Wi-Fi. Not to worry. Sorry about that. Mm. Might have to go in in the rain, so we'll see. <laughs> Goes. You've got a hat on. It's <laughs> not that sort of hat. She doesn't have a hat on. I'm <laughs> yeah. in her drive. Her well, vehicle. She's so just outside her vehicle in the drive. In the drive, yeah. 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 That's the battery. Mm. So choose it. Could have been less than fun in their drive. And just once. Yeah. Yeah. So, so. If you need something healthy like a. <laughs> Oh, and here's Ros. Ros. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, Ros. Hello, Ros. <laughs> yeah, hello. Hi. How are nice you? Nice to see you all. Is it good? Are you all right? Yeah, it's fine. I'll just turn off the other thing so it won't matter. Have you got cake, Ros? That shouldn't echo, no. Oh. Ross, have yeah, you got some cake? No. Biscuit. I've had it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sounds good enough. The idea is this is cake, a cake time, you see, it's supposed to be like a <laughs> cake time. Because we're not at church to do it. Uh, right. I, don't, I don't want this, I want a piece of cake. <laughs> <laughs> Which we haven't got. You're not going to be eating in your house. Yeah. <laughs> Would you like your strawberry? Um, there are, well, you have to go and pick a strawberry. What do you need to peel it next? <laughs> what about, do you need to go and milk a cow to get the cream to go with the strawberry? <laughs> um, well, I did buy some of Joe Burrow's ice cream, Jersey ice cream yesterday. That was very nice. So we had that. Mm. What flavour did you go for? Uh, we had um, Jersey Gold and Strawberry Dream. Oh, good. Mm. We, had, uh, we had Cornish ice cream in Milldale. Sorry, uh, Karen, and I said, um, Glen, what was it? Dovedale, it was Milldale. Yeah, we didn't go where, down to where Dovedale. We had, where we had Cornish <laughs> ice cream from the window, the house that sells oh, very nice. Yeah. Very nice ice cream. Oh, down the bottom opposite the, mm. yeah, your friend. Is she still doing it? Tease. No, it's my friend. 
No, no, it's not Kelly. No, she's um, the teacher. No, she's not. No, oh, she's not. no it's. Uh, she's died then, I think. That's Hope Dale. Yeah, Hope Dale. Meryl. Diane's mum. Hi. Hello. Hello, Hello Mel. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hello. It was just no. a short trip to the seaside. Yeah. Let's get some instruments out. Oh. I've got a biscuit now. <laughs> it's six o'clock. Yes, yeah, six o'clock. Jolly good. You didn't get cake after all then. No, nobody's made any, that's probably why. Ah. Uh, Biscuits are just as good. Yeah. I see Anna and Martin are eating, so what have you got? Have you got cake? Yes, we've got um, ginger cake. All oh, right. This was the one from the a Derbyshire recipe. I told you from, that. from a no. book, from an Alison Ackley book. All oh, right. Um, she made a, or somebody compiled some recipes that she had. Is she the one that writes children's stories? Yes. Uh, Little Grey Rabbit. No. That's it. That's it. I'm trying to remember. She lived um, near Pansley, Desic. The. No, where um. Where's it then? Where's it then? No, no, that's not really, you know. Adams. Some years ago, Carolyn, we uh, at Thorpe, in order to uh, try and raise some funds for the church, we, we devised a village recipe book. And like, people like ourselves, a group of different people, came along with recipes, and put them in the book, and then sold them to hmm. anybody that would buy them, you know. And there were quite a number of kind of recipes that were unusual. And so it might be a thought for the, the combined benefits. I don't know. So can you, can you remember anything you had? <laughs> yes, I can, well, certainly one. We had um, what was called Bush Brotherhood cake. And yes, it, I remember. The it, it a, I remember the book. Yeah, right. And it was recipe a recipe in it. Yes, it was a recipe given to us by um, Mrs. Tomlinson. And it was purported to be from the missionaries in, uh, I don't know whether it's Africa or Australia or wherever. And uh, it was very simple. Africa was it, Ari. And it was very, very simple in a recipe, uh, but very, very tasty, actually. Might make it for next week. <laughs> Share it about. Sounds like a plan. Yeah. Wonderful. Uh, Andrew's original idea was that we would bring cake and uh, tell each other what the recipe was, which is why he was telling us about the Mars bar. All <laughs> oh, right, yeah. Interesting, Anna, as well, to find out where the cakes came from. Right? Well, yes, it is interesting, and it's, it's nice to have something that was relevant. There was a different recipe, which was for um, a wakes cake. So I thought, with Parwich in mind, I'd make that. But it included oatmeal, and I haven't got any oatmeal. Oh, well, that was... So well, this was an alternative recipe. Yeah. Just found that on the shelves. Yeah. Oh look! There we go. Oh well, there we go. <laughs> that, looks like it. that looks like it, Carolyn. Caroline. Yeah. Yeah. Hold it closer to the camera. No, I've got it. Oh, have you got it? Yeah. Yes, that's the one. No yeah. farm. No farm. Yeah, that's it. Ah, that's it. Yeah. Oh, all right. Well, I shall. I shall look up the ginger cake and. Maybe there several, next week I might have some. Yeah, there were several different recipes. Oh, right. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Looking very... Looking very... Mm, <laughs> Are you getting anxious? <laughs> <laughs> weather, weather mice. Just, um, I'll just... Can you get away, Karen? Can you advise? Can Diana? Hi, Diana. Diana. Hello. Oh, hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. Wonderful. Well, welcome to our Peak 5 evening service. Um, I'm going to share the service now and then later on we'll have a look at each other and see what treasures we've brought.
for, oh, I haven't done, um, hang on. I have, to do the, I have to do the muting everybody first. So speak to you later, speak to you later. Oh, this new system's in that I can't unmute people. Um, I've unmuted Anna and Martin, but I cannot unmute the collies. So when it's your turn, you'll need to unmute yourself if you could, please. You see all right? Yes. Love. So welcome to our Powerwich Wakes caravan service. And I hope that you're sitting somewhere comfortable and not cold and windy. <laughs> and just join in when you, if you want to with the words on the screen. And we'll have a time of chat after the service as well. So there's all the caravans from what, 50 years ago? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so we'll be thinking about something that's precious to you and I'm not talking about a person because we know that and we're talking about um, actual things so if you've had a chance um, to um, get something ready otherwise just put something in your mind and you might want to light a candle as well in the service so I'm going to virtually light my candle today because it's too windy to light it actually. We'll start with our call to prayer. We will give thanks to you forever. From, From generation, generation to generation, generation we, we will recount your, your praise. praise. Be filled with the Spirit, giving Give thanks, thanks to God, God to the Father, Father at, at all, all times, times and for everything. everything. In the name, name of our Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. So we're going to have our first hymn, Guide Me, O Thou Great Redeemer. Yes, it is. Thank you, Martin. 
last one you can get your teeth into. Absolutely. <laughs> get a good sing. Thank you. Every one of us has hurt other people. And as we hurt others, we hurt God. Every one of us has said and thought wrong things. And as we say and think wrong things, we hurt God. We say together, Father God, we know in our hearts that we have gone wrong and we know that you understand. Please forgive us and help us to life to make a fresh start. Amen. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 We're going to sing again. This is a favourite for um, weddings. And of course, I'm not getting my usual dose of weddings, and neither is Martin. So we've chosen this one for us to sing together. Welcome to Richard, who's joined us. Um, nice to see you, Richard. Well done. I'm going to ask Ruth to read our Bible readings for us. Ruth, you need to unmute yourself. Thank you. Cheers. Try again. That's it. Well done. Sorry, everyone. All right. So today's reading is taken from um, the book of Matthew, chapter 13, and verses 44 to 46. 
and it's entitled in my Bible, The Parables of the Hidden Treasure and Pearl. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, hello, Robert. Welcome. Nice to see you. Hi. Well, it started to rain here, but I'm going to have a go. I've put my papers over my laptop, so hopefully we'll be all right. So I'm going to pray first of all. Dear Lord, I hope what I'm going to say makes sense to everyone who hears it. And would you please, oh God, help us to understand your message for us today. Amen. Well, I wonder, do you have a treasure in mind today? One of my treasures is my camper van. Ta -da! <laughs> it makes such a difference to my life. And I'm so blessed to have two vehicles so I can go out for the day in my camper van, make snacks and boil up a kettle and uh, fry bacon and eggs and make all the walkers jealous and have some different scenery, have a snooze, read a book, whatever I want to really. It makes a flexible holiday for Scamp and I as well. Doesn't matter if we come back with mud or sand on our paws or rain on our fur, we just can relax. We can stay up, we can have a second breakfast if we want to, we can get up really early and not disturb anyone, go for our walk. I have another treasure too. I'm sure many of you have noticed, I wear um, three gold bangles. One was my grandmother's, one was my great grandmother's, and the third I had made locally when I reached 65. And for me, they're reminders of my ancestors. But they have each, of course, a monetary value as well. My second treasure has hints of the continuity seen in the wake celebration, links down through time, generations remembering. And this year, it's been absolutely wonderful on Facebook. People have sent in photographs of past wake celebrations, past carnival floats, past processions and fancy dresses. And it's really wonderful to see them all, black and white and in colour. In Parwich, they remember their patron saint, and gathering as a village community across the generations to make merry. The procession by the odd fellows snakes through the village, joins the caravanners in the field for the outdoor service. St Peter was, of course, the founder of the Christian church, when there was one, just one, and Jesus asked him to be the founder and to protect it and dedicate his life to it, and he did. He became that fisher of men rather than a fisherman of, in the Sea of Galilee. He made great sacrifices. So I wonder uh, what you've chosen as a treasure. If I um, can try and unmute you all, would anyone like to tell us um, what they've brought or what they're thinking of as a treasure? Well, I was saying earlier, I, I brought this caravan what happened is my mother's moving house, so she's getting rid of the toys that my brother and I used to play with. So this comes from my childhood. I don't remember this as specifically mine. It might have been shared. But this, I do remember, was mine. So uh, that's, a, that's a very um, personal toy, as it were, because I, I liked it a lot when I was small. Maybe that's a sign of things to come. We're going to progress from the caravan. <laughs> Oh, prophetic. Oh, brilliant. And it might have been prophetic because Ruth's parents had one. <laughs> she, went, she went as well in, in yeah, that as a did. child. Yeah. Fantastic. I have a silver napkin ring. 
that has my name on it that my daddy and I bought when we were 10. And it was the first time I'd gone shopping with my daddy on my own without my twin sister. And I've had it forever since I was 10. I use it every day and it's very special. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, I have, um, this is a bit on the large size, but I have here, if you see it, a reproduction of painting. Can you see this? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Recognise it. Yes. Yeah. Hey, Wayne. Hey, Wayne. Very hey. close. Hey. Like the correct painter. Flatford male. But it's the. Oh, the middle of the floors. No, not quite. It's. Dead and Vale. Oh, well, you're very close. It's Dead and Vale. Um, it's called the Cornfield. Oh, the right. Cornfield by Constable. There's a collie dog. Oh, yeah. There's a collie dog there. Yeah, and and drinking some water. Some water and a boy drinking yeah. from the from the brook. And uh, the cornfield in the distance, and uh, the far distance, I think, is Dedham Church. Oh. I, I understand Constable used some uh, artist's license with regard to um, the actual location. Um, the, reason, the reason I chose it, it belongs to my mother. Okay. And um, it hung on the wall in our sitting room. Well, 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 I was always fascinated by it. And um, I sort of grew up with a fascination for this picture and uh, naturally for the, for the paintings of um, Constable as well. So it's, it's sort of got personal memories of my home in Luton and, uh, uh, and of my mother as well. And if, if anyone has not seen the original, um, I don't know, some time ago, quite a few years ago now, the original in the National Gallery was cleaned. And uh, if you ever get an opportunity to go and see the original, it is really quite something. It's one of those paintings you feel you could just walk into, you know, and you'd be there, as it were. My daughter lives in the Dedham Vale. Sorry? Robert. My daughter yes. looks over the Dedham Vale. Yes, that's right, yeah. Really? Wonderful. Anyway, that's that's one of my treasures anyway. Thank you. It doesn't have any particular monetary value because it's only a reproduction. <laughs> <laughs> well, it must have some monetary value. <laughs> uh, well, the frame might be worth a few pounds. <laughs> <laughs> no. I've got a very special, uh, I've got my father's uh, Navy hat, which he wore when he was in when he was in the war. Second World War, so I've got that, which is very precious to me. His navy hat. So, but I've not got. I've not bought it down. But it's, it's very precious to me. Okay. But that's that's not that's something with the memory and with sentiment. Yeah. But it doesn't have a lot of value. Although perhaps in a vintage shop, it might get some yeah. to a summer. Yeah. 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 But it's it, it's it's staying with me. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Anyone else got something they'd like to share? Oh, yeah. I, don't, I don't know if you can see this. I'll, I'll try and. Can you see that? It's, yeah, it, it's yeah. a plate. Yeah. Yes. And uh, it was given to Iron and I by my auntie Esther when we got married. And it's um, it's a, a, an oil painting on a porcelain, well, brown porcelain plate, um, clay. clay plate, and it's a Thorpe Mill. Now, Thorpe Mill does oh, not yeah. exist anymore. It's just a, it was a pile of stones when I and I first got married 47 years ago, but now it was com it's completely non existent. But uh, that's one of the treasures. And it was painted by um, in uh, 1886 by a man called uh, Burton, I think, or Weston. Yeah, so that's it. So that's one of our family treasures. Thank you. Right. Mm. That would be worth a few. No, I, d I don't think so, really. But if it's an original as well. Yeah. Well, yes, but it's just sentimental, I suppose. It's very special. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's the most important thing, isn't it? Yeah. And we didn't realise, sorry, I don't want to monopolise too much time, but we didn't realise until Clark's brother did um, a family history that some of Clark's family actually lived at Thorpe Mill. Yeah. In 15... 1552. 
Really? God. So what a list. And we're here and so that's yeah. how on Esther would have the blade. Possibly, yeah. Possibly. Yeah. Wow. Very deep roots. Anything you're thinking of as a treasure? Ros? Me. Anything? Me. Yes, Rob. No, I mean, I've got, I've, I've got pictures as well, but you wouldn't be able to see them, but I've got some lovely pictures, which are lovely, actually, yeah. Yes. Places where I've been to, etc. Thank you. Caroline, are you holding something? You are. Yes, I am. Uh, this is a cow shed. It's a picture of a brand new, in 1935 or something, cow shed built uh well he had it built by my grandfather and um he was i'm so grateful to him because he used to live in hartington a uh, very corny story he um was an orphan he lived with his uncle and auntie his parents had died didn't have a lot of money but he used to go to school on the train to ashbourne um and look across the valley and see parwich lees where this cow shed is um and say when i grow up and i'm rich i'm going to buy that and uh, he was quite a bright <laughs> man and he started some businesses and things and eventually he did buy parts these and i had a wonderful yeah. childhood there and we kept a little bit of it down where we live now and it's just brilliant so lovely to live here and, and is I that, a, lot of, a lot of time in a cow shed Karen, <laughs> is, that, is, that, is that the cow shed that was converted Yes, uh, it, they, they locked the end off it, I think, and uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's pretty much as it is, I think, apart from well, it's got a new mm -hmm. now. What a, what, a, what, a, what a wonderful memory that is. Yeah, it's yeah. brilliant. Yeah. I, mean, we, I look at it all the time, I can see it. Of now. course you do. Yes. Of course you do. Mm -hmm. That's good. So, isn't it interesting? Um, most of our memories, um, sorry, most of our treasures, which we value, have sentiment and memory family and friends did you bring did you say that you'd like to tell us about well i've got this painting oh. which i don't know where you can see yeah. which was done by my mother and i can remember her painting oh. it so i can remember every brush stroke that she oh did gosh. but she was a wonderful Beautiful. artist yeah. and um although she didn't sell painting she was offered quite a lot of um, inducing inducement to actually sell but she wanted them to come to their grandchildren or her children rather um, and uh, every single one we've got quite a few in the house the house is so small and the rooms have not very many vertical surfaces so not many of them can get shown at any one time we have to do a rotation of pictures yeah. just like just like the british museum Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Basically, yeah. Yes. And like all of you, I've got lots of family heirlooms that I'm very, very um, pleased to have. You know. Mm. Thank you. Um, Robert, where's where, where's the where, I thought we were going to mention um, the oh, yeah. Mr. Grace. Mr. Grace. Your your father. Yeah. This, this painting. This paint. Yes, that's right. This painting. Uh, my mother's name was Sally Grace. And she was the granddaughter of Dr. Ian e. Grace, the cricketer. And oh. this is a photograph when he was playing He's in there somewhere. for Gloucestershire. Oh, yeah. He's this gentleman there. And that's, his, that's WG, Wonderful. his younger brother in the middle there. Wonderful. Right. Wonderful. Right. My, engagement, my engagement ring was bought by Ian e. Grace for his wife. So Robert got away with that quite cheaply. Until <laughs> <laughs> so I lost a sapphire off it. And then a, a typical Aberdeen no, uh, Gordon. A cheap sketch. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, that's obviously the other side of things, yeah. We pretend that we've got nothing of value in the house, so I'm relying on you no, I know, I know. to anyone. <laughs> Particularly you, Robert. <laughs> Do you have anything you'd like to talk to us about? Yeah, I've got one more one thing here. This is a okay little silver vase. It's quite a small one. It was given. It belonged to a family friend, and when my sister got married, um, she gave it to uh, our family, and she had it on the top of her wedding cake. And um, then when I got married, I had it on the top of my wedding cake. 
and when we had our silver wedding anniversary, we put it on the top of the, the cake. And um, when our youngest son was married and had a, a celebration in this country, because he was married in, in Russia, um, we put this, I put this on the top of the cake that we had here. And the bits of heather uh, and dried lavender in it are um, from that occasion when I'd used it on the cake there. And that was three years, about three years ago. <laughs> and, and I'm afraid I hadn't cleaned it up. But it's still retained, you can still see it looks a bit shiny silver and it lives in the cupboard most of the time. Um, but it's there and it, it is a special treasure from a special friend and it's got her family initial on it which is T because it, her, her surname was Trelawney and she lived in Cornwall. So it's got Cornish memories as well for me. It's very special. Thank you Anna. Merle, Merle, do you have a message that you'd like to share with us? <coughs> You have to unmute yourself, Bill. Um, it's unmuted. I'm unmuted. Um, not, not really. Well, it might sound tight. If you, if you have pictures in the bottom of your middle, certainly Diana Houghton. She's my treasure. I <laughs> <laughs> know that people are our treasures, but we're thinking of things first. First of all, we're thinking of things. So, Robert Shields, do you have anything you'd like to share with us? That's your treasure. You're muted as well, Robert. Just muted yourself, Robert. Uh, yeah. Karen, I'm sorry, I haven't. I haven't, I haven't, I came, came to this rather late and I missed out on all. I didn't really know what to say, really, but, um, but um, uh, I can only think uh, on the subject of paintings, I just very happily found a painting that, um, of, of the bit of river that I have in, in Gordon Country, in Robert, Robert's, um, Robert's great neck of the woods. Um, uh, uh, that, and um, that I happened to manage to get the other day. And so I added to my collection of this, this bit of river by someone called Samuel Lamorna Birch, who is one of the most um, prolific painters, not a very good painter, and it's certainly not very worth a bean, I might add. Um, but it is of the bit of river that, um, that I have. And, and, um, and it used to belong to the Gordons, it belonged to uh, Robert's son. Robert's son, um, a yeah. larger clan, I suppose. Yeah. There we go. Can you see it? There we go. There's painting with a bit of a river. So yeah. that's, that's a bit of fun. That's a bit of fun. <laughs> I remember it very well. <laughs> Robert, like I remember it very well. Yeah. Say like ah. this. Thank you very much. And Richard has joined us. Richard, do you have a treasure? A, a well, got, let me, let me, yes, am I muted? Or can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Uh, well, a couple of things. Godparents, the things that godparents give you. So, um, I wear a watch there. Where are we? There we are. So it was my, my uncle's. He was my godfather. And this would have been given to him in 1935. And it worked its way through the war, through the, through the, through the desert as, uh, in, 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 in the tank regiment. And uh, when he died, his widow gave it to me and I had it restored and I treasure it. Mm. And and then here, and let me see if you can see it, it's a paper knife. Now, I've got lots of nice little bits of silver, which my godmother gave me, <laughs> a little Buddha. Maybe we can see it there. <laughs> and um, she died. I used to go to see her. She, she, um, she, I think she was, my, I think she was called, my father called her Coxie. And she, I think she, I think my mother, I think my father used to double time his options during the war and he went out with my godmother in the afternoon and my mother in the evening Coxie became my godmother and I used to go and see her out in what was then Rhodesia and um, she went down to she was a physiotherapist went down to work in uh, Musenberg in Cape Town in 1980 because of all the troubles in, in what came Zimbabwe and in her funeral in 2012 and I didn't know this her eldest godson revealed that she'd been the physiotherapist to Nelson Mandela. So I kind of wish I had known that when she was alive and asked for more. But I do have an interview with her on, on, on whatever you call it, on my iPhone, um, talking about the war and going down Regent Street to the Savoy where they did a cheap dinner or a cheap supper and a dance. And she was stopped by an air raid warden 
because um, she hadn't got her gas mask and the helmet. And a bomb went off behind her and she turned round and the air raid warden was being decapitated by his, the, um, by the helmet. Oh, so wow. these have all sorts of kind of memories and she was a wonderful person. I loved her dearly and I still miss her. Those, that's good. the importance of godparents, that so you tell them things that you don't tell your parents. <laughs> plenty, of that, plenty of those things. Yeah. Thank you, Rich. Does anyone else have anything that would like to share that haven't already said anything, Ruth? Well, I could say something, but what I found difficult, as is, is everybody else has displayed, is that the treasure is never the treasure in itself. It's always the person behind it. And I found it very difficult to choose between my treasures because they reminded me of the people and then it felt like I was putting one person before the other person. So Andrew said, why don't I just bring this and say, that's what my treasures are. Really, it's the relationships that, that my treasures signify. <laughs> Naughty. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't bring one treasure because I've got okay. lots of treasures that remind me of, of people in my past and my present. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely right. Thank you very much. I'm going to mute you all and just a bit about our um, Bible read that Ruth read for us. Jesus tells us about two people who both found treasures, a man in a field and a merchant. And the treasure they found was such that they were inspired to own it, to possess it. They sacrificed very much to own it. And um, this is my, my prop of a, a precious pearl. That's quite some size, isn't it, this pearl? <laughs> Here we go. So that's my, my um, prop for mainly for school children. The treasure that Jesus is referring to, he tells us, is the kingdom of God. And why is that so good? Well, if we have the kingdom of God in our lives, we have Jesus, the Prince of Peace. And we have the promise of everlasting life. And actually, we cannot buy that, but it does involve a cost to us. A cost not of material things that can be bought and sold, but a cost in our lives. We need to reprioritize what we say and do. For example, pay more attention to social justice and equality, to our neighbors' needs, and to be peacemakers in our families and neighborhoods and workplaces. And we need to give more attention to worshiping God with grateful hearts and thanksgiving. And you can see how costly that might be. We might have to give up to sell, as it were, activities that take up too much time and money to enable us to volunteer, to spend time in prayer, and to serve in our church or community. Well, it might involve financial cost as well, as we give to charities, we give to our church, and so our spending on non-essentials might be reduced. We prioritise basics for those in need, rather than luxuries for ourselves. So what does this mean for us today? Firstly, to think about the kingdom of God and to reflect on this invitation. Is this kingdom a place we want to live today, now, and when we die? And if so, what adjustments might we need to make? The more we feel committed to the kingdom of God, the more we want to make those changes and adjustments in our lives. The more we ask Jesus for help with this, the more he will help. The more we study the Bible, the more God's word will explain into our hearts and minds and we'll want to rush off and buy whatever the equivalent is of the field or the pearl of great price. The more we understand we want to change not only ourselves but to influence politics, economics, power bases and institutions to turn and consider social justice, fairness, in whatever circumstances we're in, all working in the little parts of life, wherever we are. I often think of it like stones being thrown into a pond 
from all around the edge and all the ripples will meet and cover the whole surface of that pond. The ripples of kingdom values joining up. Then we will hold the treasure that is beyond monetary price, but is life changing. We will hold that in our hearts and our souls will be saved. Do you want that? That is for me and for Christians the greatest treasure possible to share together. Please ask God's help now as we say our creed together. And wherever you are from, whatever your journey takes you, you can be part of God's kingdom on earth through Jesus, Lord of the kingdom. I believe in God, who made the sun and the sky, the stars and the sea, who calls us to live responsibly. I believe in Jesus Christ, who became human, who healed the sick, who talked to children, who made friends with sinners. He burned brightly and offended many. His journey was one of life and death and resurrection. His light continues to shine darkness. I, I believe in the Holy Spirit, Spirit who inspires the scriptures and, and the breath we breathe. I believe that God, that God calls us to be a community committed, committed to one another. Offering, offering a welcome, welcome to everyone, everyone. old and young, young rich, rich and poor, strong and, and weak. weak. I believe and that God calls, calls us to be peacemakers, workers, workers for justice, brothers, brothers and, sisters, and sisters, a light, a light in, in our, our world. world. Amen. Amen. Can you imagine a deer being chased through the forest? How much it longs for rest and a cool drink. Is that how we feel, rushed and chased by life and needing that cool balm of God? Martin's going to play for us as we sing as Pants the Heart. Oh, 
is all the to invite Andrew to lead our prayers of intercession. When I say, Lord, in your mercy, please respond, hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. In this Wake Weeks in Parwich, we give thanks for our local communities for those in our local communities who have helped and assisted others in need during lockdown. And we give thanks for them and for those in par which have organized the modified Wakes Week that we've been enjoying. We give thanks for the caravanners who normally join us on the field and we join with them for worship, the, the Parwich congregation joins with them for worship on the Sunday morning. We pray for them and all those who look forward to the loosening of lockdown on the 4th of July. And we pray for those in our communities who need help at this time, who need our support, who need God's presence. We think of Dennis Laycock still in hospital, who would normally be our link with the caravanners and would be involved in Wakes Week. In, in a moment of silence, I invite you to think of any others, to pray for any others who you know are in need at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. We give thanks for those in the leather industry who are working hard at this time to be able to reopen on the 4th of July. We think of those in pubs, in restaurants, in campsites, who run self-catering accommodation. But we also pray for those who are, who are limited from opening. For example, leisure centres, those who run gyms, and may continue to face financial hardship as a result. We pray for those who are suffering as a result of the lockdown. Those who've been, who have not had the seasonal jobs they would normally have expected. And we pray for those who continue to shield or otherwise are confined at home, as many of us are able to enjoy increasing freedoms. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for those who are affected by coronavirus, as we have done in previous weeks. For those who are suffering and bereaved. For the NHS staff and care workers, and all those scientists fighting the disease through their research. We pray particularly for the hotspots that are around at the moment, for, for areas in the United States and for the mention of Leicester today. We ask for your comfort, we pray for your comfort for all those who need it. We pray for your wisdom for all those who need it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And today we've been thinking about treasure. What do we treasure? And we've been challenged to think about what we value, what is most important in our lives. We give thanks for the fact that God treasures us, each one of us, 
sufficiently to send his son Jesus to die for us on the cross. And so we ask for your help, Lord, to resist the temptations, to value things that we should not value, that we, we may always treasure our relationship with you as being the most important thing in our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So we conclude our prayers and we bring our prayers together by saying the Lord's Prayer. So we say together, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. And be thy name. Kingdom thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us lead not in temptation, but deliver us from, from, from evil. From the, the kingdom, the power, and, and the glory are yours, and now, and now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Andrew. Coming out of lockdown, there's a lot of talk about the new normal. God help us to choose wisely this new. And the final hymn that Martin has chosen is one we can bring God into those choices. One more step from the world I go. Oh, God. <laughs> Thank you very much Martin. I'd like to share with you a new one of the sung blessings that's come onto YouTube recently. So I'm going to um, go and share and it's a blessing from the Northumbria community. I hope you can hear it all right. Oh. 
it's a long road and it's a painful road, but I'm never going to give up on her. She's my Sorry. child. An advert. Oh, my God. I thought I'd got rid of them all. Oh, bear with me. in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. If you've lit a candle you might want to blow it out and uh, thank you all for joining us today. It's been a wonderful service. Thank you. It was so good to hear each other's voices. So if you want to stop and chat that's fine. Um, unmute yourself if you're not unmuted yet. If you'd like to leave then it's you and have a good week. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.